So then number two on summer tips that we have is you may... That was number two. It's all in number one. Oh, that's right. I thought, yeah, the water and the refrigerator. That was all just a nice interior environment. Okay, I'll pay more attention <laughs> going, going forward. Welcome back to This and That, another episode of A, a Coffee Chat with us, the Harrahs. Uh, like before, we're going to be talking about what's been going on in the economy, some economic data that's come out. Uh, we have some summer tips for selling your home, uh, and then a little bit of what has happened in the past week and what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, but before we go any further, I, I do have a sad announcement to make. Okay. Um, so if you watched uh, last week's show, um, we, we thought that the clock that was on this table here just needed a new battery. Turns out it, it was terminal. Um, <laughs> that's a battery joke, by the way. <laughs> so bad. Dad jokes. Uh, <laughs> So we have a new clock here with us today. So welcome the new clock. Um, <laughs> it it it's trying to stay in the rustic theme that I have going on over here. But uh, yeah, so sad news. I had to report. Yeah, for you and you alone. But okay. <laughs> I'm sure the viewers were quite concerned about the status of that clock that was there before. Uh -huh. Sure. Okay. So what, where do you want to start? Uh, do we have any economic data that we were waiting on still when we recorded last week? Uh, not really. I mean, it was just another variation of the jobs report pretty much came out as anticipated. So, okay. um, but this week, uh, matter of fact, today as we're recording, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index data came out. It came out uh, one tenth of a percent lower than last month. It's at three percent, three point zero, which was lower than anticipated. They, uh, the experts, uh, had anticipated a three point one percent increase in inflation. So we're still not in the twos. We're not where the Fed wants to be. But the other big news this week is that. Uh, the Fed Chairman, uh, Jerome Powell, was testifying in front of Congress, and uh, during his testimony, he has basically said that we are seeing signs of a weakening economy, and so their second mandate, uh, after keeping inflation uh, at a reasonable level, is to make sure that there's a healthy economy. So they are starting to now weigh the impact of the high interest rates, understanding that if they keep the interest rates too high for too long, it could have a very detrimental impact on the economy and jobs and whatnot. So he's hinting that there may be rate cuts in coming up in the future. But he also, like any good economist, caveated all of his comments by saying, I want to see more data before we make a decision to, to cut rates. And so um, the markets are still putting a 70% chance that the rates will be cut in September. Uh, let's, again, see what July and August uh, brings us. Uh, core inflation was actually higher, uh, which removes the volatile energy and food prices out of the mix. Uh, gasoline prices had come down, which actually brought the, core, the, the regular inflation down. And so core inflation is still higher, but like 3.3%, if I remember correctly. So, mm -hmm. All right. so that's, that's what I have on economic news for this week. Those were some big updates that we were waiting for that impact rates and impact what yes. the Fed might be doing. Yes. And and the fact that Jerome Powell is openly talking about cutting rates and understanding their second mandate that they have is now on the table, which it hasn't been for, you know, a couple two, years. A couple years. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Is that it on the. That's it on the economy for this week. Okay. So since it is summertime, uh, we thought it'd be a good time to talk a little bit about some tips specifically for if you're trying to sell your home right now. Um, and part of this comes out of the constant stream of complaints that I see from other agents uh, about things that people do during the summer. So tip number one, especially... Well, can, can I pause you before you go uh -huh. into the tips? So 
for most of the country, this is the prime real estate selling yes. time of the year. Here in the Tucson area, it is not. This is our slowest time of the year mm -hmm. because it's hot. It's hot. It's humid. Uh, and Except right now, it's hot everywhere. Yes, it is hot clear across the country. <laughs> and a lot of our uh, transitory uh, population has moved back north for the summer. And so just things slow down here. But these tips are very important for the vast majority of the country this time of the year. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I just <laughs> put a little context on there. Yes. So the first one is, especially if your home is vacant when you're going to sell, don't put the AC at, you know, 85 or 90 degrees because you're trying to save on your electricity bill. I know it's tempting to do, but the problem is that people don't want to stay in a house when it's that warm. Yeah. So at least keep it 78, 80, something like that, where it's a little bit more reasonable. Um, depending on where you live, there might be different definitions of what is a reasonable summer temp for us. 78, 80 is, is about that temperature. Yes. Um, you want people to linger in your home. You want them to be able to see themselves living in the home. When it's 90 degrees in the home, they just want to get out yep. and that's not conducive to them eventually see how they could live there Correct. and potentially making an offer along with that. Um, again, if, if the home's vacant, you may want to leave some water bottles in the refrigerator just in case they've run out or they didn't come prepared to begin with just anything to help buyers feel more comfortable in the home. Maybe even a little note on the refrigerator, help yourself to the water inside. Exactly. Yeah. And part of this also is that some buyers are super finicky. We see this sometimes with some people. And so something really minor can create a much bigger negative impression for them than is maybe warranted. But it might be that you have the AC set at 90 and they go, oh, is that because it's broken? It's not working, you know, well enough to keep it cool. And that might be enough for them to say, nope, we're going to pass on this home. So little things can, can make a really big difference for buyers. So I think most important summer one is make sure the house is an appropriate temperature. Yeah. There's nothing worse than walking into an oppressively warm and because the air conditioning hasn't been running, it's stale and stuffy, st stuffy yeah. and yeah. it's just not pleasant. Yeah. It's not the first impression you want to be making. Exactly. So then number two on summer tips that we have is you may... That was number two. That was all in number one. Oh, that's right. I thought you added the water in the refrigerator. That was all just a nice interior environment. Okay, I'll pay more close attention <laughs> coming, going forward. So moving on from interior environment <laughs> to tip number two. Okay. <laughs> um... Given that it is hotter outside for much of the country, you may need to up your water usage a little bit and water your plants, or if you are in a place that has a lawn, water your lawn a little bit more. Again, I know not necessarily what you want to do and maybe not what you want to be spending your money on, but again, back to this idea of first impressions, what are buyers going to see when they come up to the property? You want them to see a nice lawn if you have that, not necessarily a brown lawn. You want them to see the flowers, preferably, Bloomy, which this time of the year often requires a little bit more water for that, that to happen. Yes. Um, and so consider just increasing your water, outdoor watering a little bit to help these plants make it through this hot time of the year. Yeah. You only have one chance to make that first impression. Well, you only get one chance at a first impression. Yeah. You want to make it as good as you can. Yep. And then number three, uh, Again, with these temperatures, sometimes that means more critters trying to make it inside to cool off. So you may need to have, you know, spraying done or, or some type of pest control done um, just to make sure that people aren't walking into lots of creepy crawlies in the house. Um, and then similarly, things like wasps are more prevalent this time of year. So if you see those nests forming, get rid of them as soon as possible. Again, on the first impressions, you don't want someone walking up to your house and getting stung. 
Yes. Or terrified just by the sight of them. Or terrified, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so consider the pest control part of, of summer selling as well and what might need to be done to not scare people off before they enter your home. Yes. All right. Those are, those are my three tips for if you are selling right now. Okay. Well, and good luck to you if you are selling your home. Um, and stay cool out there. Yeah. We were watching the Copa Americas and they had the semifinals in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it looked like they're in the tropics as, as hot and humid as it was. And it looked kind of miserable. Yes, it did. Yeah. 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 All right. Well. Weekend. Weekend. This past week. Yes. Yeah, so we have a few things to talk about. I have a few things to talk about. I'm sure you have a few things to talk about. Um, as you may have picked up on the previous uh, shows, uh, we're Formula One and NASCAR fans. We're auto racing fans, but those are our two primary um, uh, forms of auto racing that we like. Uh, both Formula One and NASCAR were impacted by weather. And uh, NASCAR was at the streets of Chicago. So it was a road course. And they, of course, they have the rain tires for road courses and short tracks. and. But it rained so hard, even though it was not in the forecast, that they had to red flag the event to get the massive puddles off the streets because it's a street course. It's not a paved racetrack with built-in drainage that you would expect and whatnot. Not and a nice sloped bank to no, run it all down the... No. And uh, as a result, uh, they had to shorten the race, uh, and put a time limit on the race because they're gonna run out of daylight at a certain point in time. And so it two years in a row that Streets of Chicago race has been really impacted by rain. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what that means going forward for that event. It's produced interesting winners both years though. Yes, yes it has. Uh, SVG the first year. Yes. Alex Bowman had it won a race in a couple of years. A couple of years, yep. So yeah. It does make things interesting. It, it it does. It spices. And speaking of spicing things up, uh, the rain certainly did that at Silverstone in England for the Formula One race. Yes. And I have a whole list of comments, <laughs> uh, but I will let you go first on the Formula One race. It was very entertaining. It was very entertaining. I think uh, my two takeaways were um, that McLaren tried to be Ferrari. Um, which if you watched any Formula One the last couple of years, you know that's not a compliment. Uh, Strategy-wise. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ferrari's had a very fast car, uh, not fast strategies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're now the fourth fastest car on the grid, so they have to get their strategy right if they're going to be competitive. Yeah. So McLaren um, maybe didn't make the right call a couple of times, and probably could have won this race and maybe could have had a one, two in this race I, if they had played their cards. Right. I think they were very much in position. So they, they made what I would estimate two critical mistakes. Yeah. Uh, when, when the rain, so they went from dry to wet to dry in the race. And a big part of it was timing when to change from slick tires to the intermediate rain tires. Uh, for the teams and some teams gambled and went on early and it was only raining in one portion of the track. It didn't hit Ferrari the Ferrari being one of them. Ferrari being one of them, Charles, Charles will care. Um, so McLaren were first and second in the race mm -hmm. with um, Lando Norris leading and Oscar Piastri in second. And instead of what they you know, they only have one pit stall for each team, even though they have two cars, instead of doing what they in Formula One called double stacking, where they bring both cars in, service them very quickly, one after the other, they decided to leave Oscar out for one more lap, even though he had space to, to back up and not hinder the third place car and give them time to do and execute a, a double stack pit stop without really harming Maybe him. Maybe losing a couple of seconds over. Yes, exactly. Um, they left Oscar out and Oscar was out for that one lap when the track did get inundated with rain and he lost probably 24, 25 seconds on the track. Matter of fact, Lando had caught him by the time he got back around for his pit stop. 
and dropped him back into the field. And what's really sad is later in the race, Oscar was the fastest car on the track and was making up positions. And it was clear that had they double stacked, they would have had a better chance. Yeah. The second mistake. Lando going on to softs when he should have gone on to mediums. Yes. Which were clearly the fastest tire compound. For, for the McLaren. Yeah. Well, and for any duration of running on that track. Well, I, I'll, I'll argue different, but the, the McLaren can really bring those mediums to life and they really run past. The softs were the best choice for the Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton. The hards was the best choice for Max Verstappen because he he just ran those tires to death. Yeah. So each car was better suited. And I mean, I'm sitting on my couch and I know that they need to put mediums on the McLaren just by watching what was going on in practice and early in the race and what Oscar's doing on his mediums. And they decided they tried to cover up Lewis Hamilton because he's in first by putting on sops and that McLaren still has some tire degradation, particularly on softer tires, and it did not go well. And so instead of challenging for the, the lead and the win, Max was able to catch Lando and pass him for second. And so Norris ended up third, probably should have been a win had they not messed up Oscar. I think one, two was in the car. So. so very entertaining. I have a feeling uh, especially with all the grief that the McLaren strategists have received this week, that they've learned their lesson <laughs> and uh, won't be making the same mistakes again. But then again, we said that for two and a half years about Ferrari. So I'm still not sure they've learned from all of their mistakes. Yeah. Um, you know, it's gotten better. It's gotten better. And, yeah. and they were rolling the dice with uh, Leclerc by putting him on the intermediates because you know, because of his qualifying issues, he needed to make up spots. And if you time going on the intermediates correctly, you can do that. You can do that because you can make up so much time on cars still on the track on their slicks if the track's wet enough. And the the radar tricked them, and it wasn't for another five or six laps before the track actually got wet enough. And by that time, they had burned up their their intermediates and lost that advantage. So. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Lewis winning his first race in two and a half years. I mean, that was big. And it was very emotional. I mean, yeah. he was crying on the radio, talking to his team, yeah. got out of the car, hugged his father for 30, 40 seconds, crying. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you ever wonder, is it still important to these drivers? Yeah. Yeah. Even though he's won over 100 races in his career. Uh, when you haven't been there for uh, two and a half years, you really appreciate what you have when you, you have it. Yeah. And then the other thing probably we should, before we wrap up on Formula One is, uh, and this always happens towards the end of a development cycle for Formula One. So every five or six years, they come out with new specs for the car and everybody has to redesign their cars to the new specs. Well, it's in the fourth and fifth years of that cycle where all the teams start catching up and have maximized what the car can do with the current specs. And right now it's very exciting yeah. because Red Bull is no longer the dominant car. Mm -hmm. McLaren has caught them. Mm -hmm. In some ways, it looks like Mercedes has gotten their act together. I think it depends on the track for them. I agree. I think they're track dependent. And um, it's not so much that Ferrari has slid backwards but they haven't progressed as much as the other teams. And so right now it looks like they're the fourth fastest car on the track. And then uh, Aston Martin, who was very good at the beginning of the year and towards the end he of last year, dropped off. has really dropped off. And then had a really good weekend. But then had a good, yes, had a good weekend this weekend. So I think they have figured out where they might have gone wrong on on their development path and maybe they'll be in play here pretty soon and then you have nico hulkenberg in in the haas who has finished six the two races in a row yeah out of uh, nowhere on that um and they've been bringing upgrades as well uh nico likes them kevin magnuson isn't is in love with the upgrades but 
Nico gets every little bit out of that, that house car. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. I, I don't think Hungary, which is the next race, is a particularly good track for the, the Haas, but we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll really find out how far the Haas has progressed when go to Hungary. Yeah. So, and then I have one other big item which if you watched last week's show, I did cut, I left a mini rant in, but I did cut <laughs> a longer rant out of, because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the U.S. men's national team has fired Greg Berhalter as the coach of the men's soccer team. Yes. And I think it is the step in the right direction. Um, the question is, Who's going to be the next coach? And hot off the press today, the men in Blazers report, well, they actually quote another reporter, that uh, the U.S. men's national team's top target is Jurgen Klopp. You've been calling for that one. I have been calling for that one. And, you know, if those not familiar, Jurgen Klopp is one of the top coaches in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, he led Borussia Dortmund to the finals of the Champions League um, when Bayern Munich dominates Germany and Borussia Dortmund was every bit as good as Bayern Munich while Jurgen Klopp was there. And he's been the last six years at Liverpool, won them a Premier League title for the first time in like 30 years, won them a Champions League there, and then decided to step down at the end of this season because he was burned out, quite frankly, of the day-to-day -day grind of Premier League coaching. And he wants to recharge his batteries. Well, the job of being a coach of a national team is far less demanding because you only get your lads in for a couple of weeks every few months um, when there's international competition breaks. And so it might give him a real opportunity to re-energize. Uh, the United States is hosting the World Cup along with Canada and Mexico in 2026. That might be a lot of fun for Jurgen Klopp. So I don't know what it's going to take to get Jurgen. Uh, Jurgen might be interested. He did send a very enticing um, 4th of July tweet, you know, wishing America, you know, joy on their Independence Day. So, you know, little subtle hints like that. Okay. And, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Hope, I, I hope we get an announcement sooner than later because the, the drawing this out longer might, might be painful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
and it's supposed to drop the temperature down to close to 100, which is our normal mm -hmm. average temperature for this time of the year, and high probability of getting some rain showers through, and, and it's... Yes, I mean it brings with it some hazards, but but we really enjoy a good desert rain here. So, I'm looking forward to that this weekend. And I keep refreshing my weather app and going, "That's a high in the 90s. Is this right? <laughs> yes. Are you sure? This seems too low." <laughs> and the nice thing is, even after the storms pass through, it's supposed to remain uh, near normal temperatures for mm -hmm. like a week after, which which is nice. Average here is a lot better than above average. Yes. Yeah. Those 10 degrees make a big difference. Yeah. I am looking forward to this weekend, um, Stacks Book Club, which uh, is located up in Oro Valley. It's uh, a coffee shop and a bookstore combined. Uh, they are celebrating their one year anniversary coming up this weekend, and they are having a little event with uh, a pizza food truck and some music and so. I'm hopefully going to be able to stop by and and see that for a little bit. Um, when I moved here to, to Oro Valley originally, um, my kind of one complaint was, you know, I have almost everything that I want close by in Oro Valley. It's really conveniently located. I don't have to leave Oro Valley, but there's not a good sit down coffee shop where I can go work. and. If I'm not a like in pajamas, just rolled out of bed worker, I'm a coffee shop worker. It's one or the other. <laughs> so I needed my my coffee shop place to go do work. And so a year ago, Stacks opened and I finally got my, yes. my third place to work from. And this has been a long standing thing for you. And so when yes. you, you were at college in Lexington, Virginia, you yes. had your little favorite place to go to. Pronto. Pronto. Yes. I always knew when she was heading to Pronto because I would get a phone call from her as she's walking from campus to, to Pronto. Yes, That's, my 20, 30 minute walk to yes. go get there. Yes. And uh, uh, the owners of Pronto are also Formula One fans. And yes. so Kelly could get her Formula One fix at Pronto as well. Yes. We still message each other uh, on big race weekends on Instagram. So anytime something big happens, I'm expecting a message from them uh, about that. And for the parents that would come to Lexington, uh, Lex, as it's known uh, locally, um, Pronto is also a favorite place because not only does it serve coffee, it serves wine. And so uh, the parents in particular really enjoyed Pronto as well. So. And Stax also has wine and beer. Well, so there you go. It's very similar to what I had in Lux. And so, yes, very happy when it opened. Very happy that they've made it a year now. And then they, I think you mentioned that they sell books there as yes, well. So it's a bookstore as well as a coffee shop. And every time I walk in, I go, oh, I could spend a lot of money here. Yes. It's not quite as big as Palos, but I'm guessing yeah. it kind of has a similar vibe where you could spend all day there. Yeah. Uh, drinking coffee and looking at books and yes yeah. very much so so yeah i'm excited for them i hope they stick around for a long time so that i have my place to go work there you go i did want to mention that earlier in the video but i, I didn't uh but if you have uh, youtube music you can listen to these podcasts on YouTube Music as well as on YouTube, uh, the video version. So if you want to listen to us in your car, instead of watching the video, uh, you can always listen on YouTube Music. We'll be branching out to other services soon, but right now that's uh, also where you can listen to us uh, each week. Not missing too much on the not having video part of this. So No, I try to put some nice photographs and whatnot in there, but you know, it's, it's our witty banter that I'm sure that people are tuning <laughs> in for. Oh, and in looking at our data from last week, uh, we were joking about not having any uh, fans from Great Britain. Turns out uh, last week, 5% uh, of our viewership was from Great Britain. <laughs> I'm sure they tuned in for our cricket talk uh, that we had going. Um, and uh, as I put up in the video, I had exceeded my my knowledge of the sport. 
uh, when we were talking. So uh, I don't know if uh, our British fans are going to be tuning in again. We did talk about the English England uh, national team, though. So, you know, yes, we did. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, five percent. We love you. <laughs> That's all I had. I think that's all I have for this week. So this week's a little bit shorter than last week. Uh, probably more in line with our first uh, podcast. But, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes we have more to talk about than other times. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, we'll see you next week. Bye.